In terms of designing a beetle fly pattern, there's a spectrum from a high floating one seen here that barely dents the film but yet has active flailing legs. The spectrum continues on down to swimming beetles that are, that are underwater patterns. The dry fly, uh, high floating dry fly style pattern of beetle predominates down and they are made mostly from foam and deer hair as shown here. All have rigid legs that are for the most part very difficult to move in the currents. In the middle part of the spectrum are these low floating beetles shown here that are in the film and tend to have flailing legs like the ones we saw before. They're highly active and they also tend to float head down and posterior up as shown here. Continuing on down the spectrum we have the whirligig beetle which is lives mostly at the surface but also can dive under the surface of the water as shown here. To breathe underwater it carries with it an air bubble cause, called a plastron which in the applicator beetle design that we're showing here is represented by a bead. So why do we use a bead on these beetle patterns? For one, it's, uh, it keeps the foam from slipping back over the hook eye. And two, water beetles, like this whirligig bug, carry air bubbles at their rear that they use to breathe underwater. And here you can see that bubble flashing and refracting light as the the beetle swims in maneuvers. A silvered bead would represent that quite nicely. These are all the materials you need to tie the beetle. Um, I'm only going to go over the eyeshadow applicators here. The rest are used in the uh, uh, fly tying video. The applicators, the black ones I get from Amazon, the white ones I get from the dollar store. The black ones, of course, uh, make a very nice beetle imitation. Uh, what you do is these come on little plastic slips and you uh, sticks and you just simply slide off these foam bits. Um, they're hollow and you can slide them up over the hook. They're hollow. And I glue them in place. I inject glue in here and glue them in place. Uh, the white ones have the advantage of you can use uh, permanent markers to uh, color them. And here I put a high vis spot which is popular on the beetle patterns. And you can also use it to do like a back swimmer type coloration beetle, uh, in a beetle pattern. So we were tying the uh, applicator beetle today. It's uh, based on a uh, Tiemco 206BL hook in a uh, size 10. I've already put on the glass bead. It's a silver glass bead which is going to look like the air bubble that aquatic beetles take. This is an attractor beetle pattern. They can look like many insects, water beetles, back swimmers, whirligigs, as well as flesh floating uh, terrestrial beetles. As we saw in those earlier videos, some of the terrestrial beetles can float quite low in the water. And while there's an array of dry fly patterns out there that emulate beetles, what is needed are these uh, wider designs of the flesh floating or swimming beetles. The applicator beetle can fill, fill both roles. It, it can look like a, either source of beetles, which is the aquatic beetles or the uh, terrestrial beetles that have fallen accidentally in the water. So this is a reverse tide fly. It's in, um, this size is in the mid-range for beetles. Beetles can range from millimeters to centimeters in size, many centimeters in size. And this one is about a centimeter. Um, so we're looking at the sort of a typical range for beetles in my area anyways. First I lay down a thread base of the uh, Ultra Thread 70 denier in black because we're tying a black aquatic beetle, a plastron beetle. The air bubble is called a plastron. We lay down a thread base over the hook shank to support the foam that we're going to add. Um, and we also build up a cone of thread at the bead so it holds in place when we slip the foam applicator head over um, this. So this is a reverse tide fly. Um, the posterior is going to be back here at the, uh, the hook eye and the head is going to be out over the bend, as we'll see here. So I take, this is closed cell foam. The applicator heads, this is the makeup applicator head here. You can see there's two sizes. We're going to be using the smaller size today. 
But this is a hard sponge foam that can absorb some water. And we balance that in terms of flotation buoyancy with this closed cell foam that does not take up water. And so we can adjust by how much closed cell foam we use relative to the hard sponge foam, how high this floats in the water. All right, so we've got our foam cone up, our thread cone up here, and we leave a slight gap because we're gonna fit that, fit that applicator head over the top of this fly and cover up this base of foam. So we tie it up one side, and then we use, lose, use a little foam tag out over the hook bend. That's good. We're, we're putting that in because it um, makes the, this particular design will then float pretty high in the water column. And then we can later trim that if we want to, to uh, make it float more like the head down style of a resting back swimmer a uh, fly or aquatic, the general aquatic beetle. Okay. So again, we're balancing this closed cell foam that's going to be on the inside of the applicator head with, with this uh, hard sponge foam of the applicator head, yeah. And that's going to vary the uh, balance of this fly. Now we um, put this off at the head here. So that's where we're going to whip finish after we slip the applicator head in. And I cement it all in place with, and in this I'm going to use super glue, gel super glue. And um, I often use the uh, two ton epoxy that has a long working period. But for this tie, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to use the uh, gel uh, super glue. So then I'm going to put some on the inside here. And um, daub off the end. You don't want a lot of super glue on the outside because it um, turns white in water. And uh, which is undesirable in a black fly. But if it does, if you do end up with some out there, it's, um, you can color it with the uh, felt tip. Okay, and then we got to um, clear the hook eye with my bodkin. Because, of course, you just slid a bunch of super glue over this. All right, so. Now we're going to tie off this whole thing back here. This is going to be looking like the head there of the beetle. And we tie this off pretty tightly. We don't want to get a lot of water inside this fly. All right. Whip finish it ahead of time, and then we're going to add the legs. I like the whip finish twice and then not use any cement on the outside of the fly. Whip, whip finishing at the back of the fly is always kind of a hassle. Anyway, okay, and then we have the Uniflex, which I show after this fly tying video, which which of these legging materials is splittable. As you can see, I've split it here, but this is the Uniflex Black that I'm using on this fly. Um, and I've threaded it on a needle here, an upholstery, big eye upholstery needle. And then I'm going to form the legs through by going through the body on the underside of the hook shank. Oops. One, 
once. The primary function of the superglue is to hold the body in position, but also keep the legs inside here um, and not slip out after the superglue sets. Oops, I goofed. I pulled it tight over there. All right, we'll just uh, we'll just thread through some more legs. So I leave the legs long when I'm doing this because I want them to be flexible and and highly active. When the when I see these videos with the agitated beetles, they're very they're flailing their legs, you know. And um, so I think it's important for the fly uh, pattern itself to have long legs and flexible legs. That's why I split the uniflex. I'm going to set in once. I don't try to be anatomically correct. I just put in as many legs as I think it needs to to look real buggy. I mean, this is an attractor pattern. It's not anatomically correct beetle. I'm just trying to get something that is attractive to the trout. With the plastron bead, which is highly attractive, the flash of the plastron is highly effective and highly attractive to the bee to the trout. So then, there you have it. I squeeze it all together. And there it is, the uh, the Plastron beetle. But it's, in general, it's the applicator beetle. So this is the Plastron variation. Now, this is a low floating fly, as you'll see. And so you have to fish this with an indicator, because you're not going to be able to see this fly when it's flush floating in the film or slightly below the film, depending on how much internal foam you've put, you know. And we it's possible to go ahead and trim the head if you want and uh, make it look more beetly, you know. And also, this is how trimming this head is how you adjust the flotation of this. If we trim this head way back, this will actually float with the hook bend down and the posterior, represented by the plastron bubble, will be up towards the surface. And that's what uh, is commonly seen in these water beetles. That's how they rest, the back swimmers and such. So there you have it. The applicator beetle, the plastron variation of the applicator beetle. You saw in the previous video that the natural beetles tend to float awash in the film and also tend to be head down and posterior up. This is what Mike Lawson noticed in back swimmers and water boatmen as well, that they tend to rest at the surface with their posterior up. So now I'm, I've had these uh, applicator beetle uh, sitting in water overnight and I'm going to pour them in now and we can see how they float. So the sponge rubber has absorbed some water, but they still float quite well because we have closed cell foam on the inside. And you can see here that this, these guys are floating posterior up and head down slightly. The head down would be at the hook bend and the posterior is at the, uh, the uh, glass bead that reps, represents the plastron. Uh, you can, it's also possible to tie these patterns with a, a, a foam tab sticking out over the hook bend so that they float quite level and higher in the film. And you can adjust how high they float by how large you make the foam tab. The applicator beetle successfully imitates uh, low floating beetles with flexible legs that move in the microcurrents. It also can imitate these diving beetles and the swimming beetles. So the problem is, is since it's below the film, it's flush floating, 
you can't, it's very difficult to see the strike. You can't add bright spots and such as that because that'll put off the trout. So what it means is you have to use an indicator rig to fish this fly. The legging material is made of these uniflex and flexi floss and a super floss style of legging or what I find is are splittable. Um, I'm going to show you how they split here in a second, but uh, these ones seem to take on a fibrous character when they're extruded and you can actually split those fibers to make thinner and thinner legging material. So this is how I split the Uniflex material. I placed it on a piece of paper and I uh, have a single edged razor. And the point is you kind of pass the razor through about half thickness through the piece of paper and the material to get it to penetrate. And then you pull. And split. There, we've split it. 